Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us for our Subs and Sandwiches webinar this morning. Of course, this virtual platform is one for the ages. We have with us this morning McCarthy Building Companies Incorporated. I am Marchette Turner, Director of the Houston Minority Business Development Agency. And as I just said, our Subs and Sandwiches platform is one of our premier platforms. It's a signature program, and we are always delighted to bring you um, opportunities that we hope you're taking advantage of. Um, during today's webinar, all attendees will be in listen-only mode. There will be Q&A at the end of the session where my team and I will ask McCarthy the very questions that you yourselves type into the chat. So as soon as we get started, I encourage you to type your questions as you think of them in an effort to maximize our time together. Uh, this presentation is being recorded and it will be made available to all our registered participants uh, via our um, YouTube channel um, after this event. So I'm always excited to uh, introduce our team and that is Ms. Jessica Vasquez, who serves as our program coordinator, Ms. Deidre Sutton, our business advisor, Ms. Tanya McGilber, our business advisor and alumni client engagement specialist, and Ms. Joni Hall, who is our business trainer. Uh, I will now turn this over to Ms. Adrienne Williams, who serves as the director of supplier diversity and community outreach for the Southern region of McCarthy Building Companies Incorporated. Adrienne, take it over, my friend. All right, thank you, Marcia. And I appreciate the amazing introduction. Absolutely. Um, thank, thank you to M MBDA Houston for allowing us to participate again and having us back. We're all, always excited to be a part of this premier event and uh, participate with you today. So again, as she said, I'm Adrian Williams. I am the Director of Diversity uh, for our Southern Region with McCarthy Building Companies. Uh, to get us started, I want to also introduce our other McCarthy partners so that you know who's on the virtual presentation and here with us today. And then um, immediately following, um, if they, they present, we will move into our safety moment. Keshav, I'll start. Yeah, uh, my name is Keshav Vasudevan. I'm an estimating manager with our uh, heavy civil marine division. I'm uh, based out of the Channel View office uh, here. I've been with McCarthy a little over uh, six and a half years. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew. Okay. Yep, I'm Andrew Rupp. I'm a pre-construction director. Um, I'm out of our Houston office. I um, work on a lot of our commercial projects. So uh, healthcare being one of our main focuses. Um, I've been with McCarthy for just about six years. And I'm Kim Williams. I'm an operations assistant, um, and I also support um, our diversity uh, team as well as our pre-construction team here in the southern region. And I've been with the company for, it'll be 16 years in June. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so lots of tenure. I'm probably the newest a uh, member of the team, so been with you uh, two years actually uh, this this month. So with that, we will get started. Next slide with our safety moment. Uh, so real quick, so McCarthy for McCarthy, safety is one of the most important things that we do each and every day. And we like to start all our meetings with a safety moment, and this is no exception. And the safety moment I wanted to go over was that while we pay close attention and we are always aware of safety on our job sites, it's equally important to make sure that we carry the safety mindset even away from work at home and at other things that we do. A couple of things to uh, pay attention to when we are at home, when we are uh, away from home is particularly when we are driving, don't speed, some things to pay attention to, don't drink and drive, always maintain your uh, vehicle in good operating conditions. Uh, allow for driving conditions when it's raining or if it's snowing, which doesn't happen very often over here. Uh, adjust your speeds, adjust your time that it takes to get accordingly. Uh, be courteous, even if you're not in a company vehicle. Uh, as far as at home is concerned, just minimize electrical exposures. 
eliminate tripping hazards, uh, make sure that you don't overextend when you're using ladders. Uh, good thing to uh, have in mind is to know some basic first aid and if possible CPR, uh, check your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors at the house at least once a year or twice a year, which, which is preferable. The other things when you're out at play, uh, don't overexert yourself. Make sure you're stretching before you do anything strenuous. Uh, one thing that I've been taught is don't try to keep up with the kids. Uh, they're in way better shape than we we are. Uh, another thing, just teach your family above all else about safety and make sure that you enforce them. So safety doesn't stop as soon as you leave work. It needs to continue at each and everything that we do every day in our life. And I love those safety mm -hmm. moments. Yes, I do as well. So, yep, safety is something very important in all things we do, both live, work, and play. Thank you, Keisha. So, we'll get started. Um, just a, an agenda to go over some of the things you will hear from us today or, and that we're going to share as a part of our presentation. So, we've done our introductions. Of course, we'll talk a little bit about McCarthy, just some background about the company and who we are. I'll talk about our commitment. I'll certainly uh, highlight some of the efforts that we're doing in our commitment around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then we'll get into uh, kind of our day-to-day -day operation, a lot of the things we do out in the field, visible, more visible to you as we talk about our prequal and then upcoming projects and pursuits. All right, uh, thanks, Adrian. I'll uh, kind of take us a little bit through some quick facts um, and a little bit of introduction about McCarthy. Um, some of you may not be familiar with us. Um, we have been in the Houston area for a little over 25 years. Um, so we have been in the community for, for quite a while. A um, little bit about us, uh, exceptional finan financial health. So uh, we're a pretty big company across the United States. Um, last year, we did about 8.9 billion in sales. And this coming year, we're looking to do about 6 billion in revenue. So across the nation, um, we are quite large. Um, but with that, we try to still be a true community builder. So uh, we like to self perform a lot of our work. Um, we typically do things like concrete um, and cheer works and earthwork. Um, and we also like um, to do community projects. So. We have a program car called Heart Hats, where um, we give back to the community, whether that's, you know, um, building renovation projects um, for local folks um, who are in need of help, you know, building a ramp up to their house so they can have wheelchair access or um, doing food drives for, you know, people impacted by natural disasters, that kind of thing. So, although we're big, we like to, you know, feel small in, in the communities that we serve. Um, additionally, we have a wide range of project types, um, as in 1 of the following slides, you'll see kind of the markets uh, that we're across, but, um, we like to have a diversity in project types, um, and geographic locations kind of helps us weather, um, any kind of economic, um, conditions that come up, you know, building a bunch of different projects in a bunch of different areas helps you to weather through some of those storms. Um, we are number 21 um, in the EN, ENR top 400 contractors, so we're up there quite a ways. We are 100% employee owned, which is kind of unique in the construction industry. Um, so that's something that's, um, you know, really drives our folks to, um, you know, come to work each day and, and really feel a part of a team. And then one thing you'll see in, in our next slide um, in our markets, we are in the number three uh, healthcare top general contractor. So. Uh, we like to consider ourselves uh, one of the nation's, you know, largest healthcare um, builders. Uh, next slide. Um, so a little bit, kind of what I was mentioning, our markets. Um, definitely, you can see in the red there, healthcare is um, the largest portion um, sector that we we are in. But we do also diversify and have heavy civil and marine work. Part of what Keshev does with his group. Um, we have a big parking structure presence out in our California offices, which we're actually trying to bring here to the southern region, which we are in in, in Houston. Um, we really do like those more technical 
you know, challenging projects. Um, for instance, one you see up there in the top right there is a picture of the Museum of Fine Arts that were recently completed within the last couple of years. Very technical, um, you know, high end finish uh, type projects. We also do very large projects such as the Raiders Stadium um, in Las Vegas. We finished that a couple of years ago. You'll see that on TV as you're watching, you know, sporting events, NFL. Um, it's a joint venture we did out there. Um, but although we do, you know, these big diverse projects, we also do smaller projects um, through our SSG group, which is our specialized solutions group. So we do also take care of our healthcare clients and other clients in that 500,000 to about $5 million range. So really, we're kind of all over the spectrum. We try to provide, you know, opportunities for you all to get involved um, and, and break up packages in certain ways that um, that you guys can can get involved with. Uh, next slide. And then lastly, kind of what I touched on, you know, we're a national company, so we have a big presence across the United States. Uh, we're split into five different regions. So Northern Pacific, Southern California, Southwest, Central and Southern, which is our group. Um, and then there's a total of 15, you know, self service offices within those regions. Uh, but there are some other offices that aren't shown on here where we do have a smaller presence, like. Um, in our region here, Austin, we have recently branched out into Austin and having an Austin office and a couple of large um, healthcare projects over there. But um, as far as the southern region, which is what we're in, we're in Dallas, Houston, Channel View, and Atlanta. Um, our corporate office is out of uh, St. Louis, but our CEO does sit out of our Dallas office. So um, we do have a pretty big corporate presence in our Dallas office as well. That's just a little bit about McCarthy and turn it over to Adrian to talk a little bit more about our inclusion team. Inclusion team here again in the southern region. I'm sorry, I was muted. So again, you, we have uh, the slide to show our, our team here uh, for the southern region, but also nationally. And so first we have Kamisha Mason. She is our vice president of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So she does sit in Dallas uh, and formerly here uh, supporting the Southern region, but at a national level, she's our VP supporting all of our efforts nationwide as a company in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then again, myself in the middle, I'm director, as mentioned before, for the Southern region and supporting those markets that you just saw um, on the previous slide, again, for our offices uh, that encompass the, uh, what's known as the Southern region. And then Kim Williams, also introduced herself earlier. Uh, she is like our quiet thunder, um, oftentimes behind the scenes, but uh, a formidable part of DEI, but also equally with our projects and operations, helping our estimating team. So um, she's really the glue um, of connecting the dots from what we do internally, but extending out to you in the efforts that we do boots on the ground for our projects. So that's the makeup of our media team. We certainly have what we call inclusion champions. They are not listed on this slide, but also our partners or an extension arm of what we do. Um, the three of us can't be um, all places all the time, as you saw with all our you know, multiple offices and business units. So we certainly have, I call our inclusion champions who are on the ground attend uh, many of the events uh, like with Houston MBDA and others in the Houston region that are certainly a part of the team as well. Next slide. So for our culture of inclusion, um, as you know, with anything with diversity, equity, inclusion, or when you hear DEI, um, it certainly always starts at the top. So for McCarthy, we are committed to DEI efforts, and we have that commitment of our leadership, again, starting with our CEO who sits in Dallas, um, and then throughout um, the region and just throughout the nation, through all of our efforts, and we are rolling that out, again, company-wide, many of the efforts led under the leadership of Kamisha Mason, but we have the leadership um, and our commitment and intentions uh, to be intentional of the work that we're doing as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Certainly relationships are a key part of what we do. Much of why we're here today, we understand that partnerships um, in the community and with our partners uh, are important, um, which ties into community engagement, uh, also coupled with capacity building, uh, they kind of roll together, but one of the things I want to highlight in the way of community engagement, as well as capacity building, we have a program called the McCarthy Partner Development Program. MPDP is our acronym for that. And so essentially it's a kind of a 10 month uh, program 
We recently completed this um, in Houston and Atlanta last year in 2022, but we identify uh, trade partners in the subcontracting supplier community uh, and just go through, I guess, kind of a, almost a training and development, but just mentoring, if you will, to help them learn about McCarthy, folks within um, our business units and who to connect with and how to do business, but it also gives us the opportunity to learn more about you. And so we um, certainly learned about some new partners um, in the Houston area. I think we had about 15 participants in that class last year. And so that's a program we have and we'll continue doing and just rotate it throughout our region. I get asked that sometimes. So between Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, we'll continue that that program is ongoing and just rotated in our different markets, but we're very excited about the work that we were able to accomplish and look forward to continue to do the MPDP program in the future. And then opportunity creators. So again, much of why you're here today, um, want to make sure we talk about what are the opportunities of the work that we're doing and what that looks like on upcoming projects, as well as um, actually bidding in the scopes and types of work that may create opportunities for you to grow your business. Next slide. Again, a little more just honing in on our commitment. Every project, every time uh, is something, again, we are intentional about of uh, making sure we identify or just being no more knowledgeable about who some of the small uh, businesses are, minority women, uh, just the various certifications that are available, but identifying those folks and, and figuring out what are the opportunities to, per to participate on our projects, every project, every time. Again, we certainly always want to meet our client and owner expectations of meeting or exceeding project goals when those exist or are set for a project. But also we have our internal goals as a company set forth, again, being intentional about identifying opportunities, even when there isn't one, there's one that's not set or may not be set um, by the owner for a project. Again, facilitating introductions and networking with large primes and diverse firms. That's something we uh, strive to do all the time in, in capacity. Many times when we have project specific outreach, we engage uh, maybe our MEP partners or so folks at the first tier that uh, again, new opportunities um, for some of our smaller subs or lower tier partners um, to engage in that manner. Um, but as well as events like Construction Inclusion Week, We've had that uh, in the past, and again, that's an annual event. Again, opportunities, whether it's working directly with McCarthy or indirect with other large primes that may be on, on some of the projects we're working on as well. And then also just being a resource and advocate, and that just ties all together in day in, day out, and all the work that we do. Next slide. Again, we embrace inclusion on all our projects. So again, I mentioned a little bit before, we have some non-certified businesses. And again, making sure our first tier also have that same commitment to demonstrate uh, their best efforts to bring on uh, firms uh, up under them. So again, at all levels of the project, we're really looking for those efforts and opportunities of inclusion. Um, diversifying firms encouraged to evaluate direct and indirect contract opportunities. Again, mentioned that at all tiers, but also maybe some things that are, I would say, the ancillary services that maybe aren't directly tied to a job. We certainly look for, again, small minority women on firms, whether that be with office supplies or printing um, and just other efforts of uh, wash out. Sometimes we get that or cleaning um, our trailers. So we've certainly um, talked with certain, several firms that are in those spaces and again, look for those opportunities that may not be directly tied to the project as well. So again, always striving for inclusion as a part of that process. And then just wanna make sure we reiterate that all partners must demonstrate inclusive behavior on our sites at all times. Next slide. Yeah, so thanks Adrian. I'll take us through a little bit of our commercial pre-com team. So, what you see on the slide here is just some of the leadership within uh, the commercial pre-con team here in Houston. Um, besides these folks here, we've probably got a total team of estimators, senior estimators and managers of about 15 folks. So pretty big pre-con office here in Houston, but Judah Ald is, he's our vice president of pre-con. So he's kind of the leader of the whole group. Um, that's me there, uh, next pre-con director. Joey, he's uh, another one of our pre-con directors. He kind of focuses um, on a lot of our healthcare clients, our SSG type clients as well. Um, Walker is another one of our pre-con directors. His focus is um, on our Metro and our Exxon um, clients. And those are a couple of projects I'll talk about coming up. 
And then Jason Fee is actually pretty new with us. He's our MEP director. So um, he helps out a lot of our, um, you know, the whole team on um, MEP since it's more complex scope. And then down there at the bottom is James Rickaway. He's one of our estimating managers, and his focus is on self performed concrete. Uh, next slide. So just uh, a couple of our upcoming commercial projects. Um, one thing that you'll note, I mean, these are just a few of the ones that we're highlighting. Um, there's always things that pop up that we look at. Um, we are pretty fortunate that we have a pretty good backlog right now and are churning through a lot of the work that we've won over the past uh, year or two. Um, so if you don't hear anything or invites from us immediately, just know that you know we're kind of selective on the projects that we're looking at, but. Um, there are things out there um, that we continue to look for. Um, one thing that's kind of immediate Q2, you'll see there we're working on in-house right now is the West Belfort Park and Ride uh, project for Metro. Um, that one actually um, bids uh, later this month. Um, then following that is our Metro Northline Transit Center parking structure. That's another one that we anticipate coming out being issued in Q2. And then one that we've kind of been following and, and helping Exxon uh, budget for the past probably two years or so and helping them through design is this Exxon Mobil Baytown, Baytown Refinery Central Shop. Um, it's about a $60 million project out there at their Baytown facility. Um, pretty cool project. It's outside the fence. Um, so some people have questioned, you know, is that inside the fence or outside since it's Exxon, but it is outside the fence. Uh, we expect drawings here um, sometime in, in uh, Q2. Uh, Q3, th we've got a couple confidential clients, um, some healthcare, and some research um, build outs. Um, good work, um, you know, kind of mid sized type projects, um, but those should be coming out Q3. And then in Q4, um, we're expecting some, some aviation projects, uh, general use building. Um, at our at the hobby facility, and then we also have other special um, solutions projects, which we call SSG. Those top um, kind of pop up throughout the year. Um, those are in the kind of five hundred to three to five million dollar range for some of our good healthcare clients down in the med center. Um, those range from Texas Children's to to Baylor um, to Methodist. Um, those are kind of our typical projects or, or clients that we see those types of projects. So quite a bit of stuff coming up this year. So definitely stay in touch. Um, all the folks I mentioned, we're all on LinkedIn. So if you want to get linked up with us, uh, definitely search for us in there and, um, you know, look forward to um, working on these projects with, with some of you. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, I'll give a quick update and a brief introduction to the team on the heavy civil Marine division. They can see on the slide, we actually have uh, two offices. The, the Dallas office does a lot of the heavy civil uh, tech start type work uh, that's run by Colleen Martindale. She's the VP of Precon and uh, uh, Ricardo Morales is the uh, Precon director and they have about uh, five other estimators under them. I work in the channel view office. Uh, we primarily focus on uh, uh, marine and uh, industrial construction. Adil Malik is the VP of estimating, and I directly report to Chuck Shive, uh, who works out of Dallas, but uh, he's here most of the time anyway. And as you can see, that's uh, the third one is me, uh, Kesha Vasudev, and I'm an estimating manager here. We have two other uh, estimating managers, and we have four other estimators. So in the channel view office, it's about uh, six to eight of us folks in here. Uh, next slide, please. These are a few of the projects that uh, we're looking at and we're waiting for it to uh, come out onto the street. The Port of uh, Houston Wharf 7 is at the Bayport facility in Seabrook, Texas. It is uh, currently out for bid. It's due May 10th. Uh, it's about a $120 million project for the Port of Houston. Uh, most of the majority scopes that we would be looking for help as far as the supplies are concerned would be concrete ready mix, rebar, uh, uh, precast, utility structures, aggregates, and on the subcontract side would be on the uh, hauling, uh, rebar installation, and uh, 
and electrical and uh, electrical and telecom installation. And uh, the other job, it's not come out yet, is the port of port author birth by backlands. We expect it sometime in the next month. That'll be about a, a $60 million project that'll be in port author. And the third job listed there is for the Corps of Engineers. It, it is also in uh, Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, that is a job called uh, fronting protection for pumping stations. Most of these jobs, uh, again, similar uh, bid uh, requirements as far as uh, supplies and uh, subcontractors are concerned. It's uh, heavy concrete piling. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of electrical related work that we would be needing uh, subcontract help with. And uh, in Q3 and Q4, we've got the Spillman's Island bulkhead. That job is about $150 million project. That is that is here in uh, Seabrook, Texas. And all those other jobs you see are uh, the PHA stands for the Port of Houston. And uh, one of the big things is is like we do, a, we're currently doing four projects for the Port of Houston. They're one of our uh, main clients and there's a lot of uh, future jobs that's going to come out for the Port of Houston. Not all of them are listed here uh, between this year and next year. Uh, they've got close to 200 to $300 million worth of projects that they will be letting out for bid. They have a, they primarily have a major push for small, small minority women owned business enterprises. And one of the important things that they require is uh, for these firms to be registered with the Port of Houston. And uh, if most of the firms that are listening in, if you're not uh, registered with the Port of Houston, I strongly recommend that you all get registered with the Port of Houston. It is a fairly straightforward process. And uh, on, a, on a future slide, my contact information is there. You can reach out to me directly and I'll be able to uh, direct you to the right person with the Port of Houston for getting registered. Uh, but there's a lot of work that's coming up, and uh, as Adrian had mentioned, uh, we're definitely looking for partners on the on on the small minority-owned business side to partner with and do some of these projects. Next slide. Uh, so do you want to do this, Andrew, or shall I take? Shall I do it? Yeah, I can. I can do it. Um, so one thing, kind of uh, in addition to what Keisha was talking about, you know. Port of Houston, um, get registered. Some of our other projects like Metro, uh, you have to get registered for that as well. But one other thing for McCarthy specific is we have a, our own prequal um, process. So it's pretty straightforward as well. Um, if you go to that our website, um, prequalification.mccarthy.com, you can also go to mccarthy.com and there's um, on that very first page, there's a button up in the right and it says subcontractors. So you can click on that. And that takes you to this as well. Um, Jen Weeks, uh, her email is there as well. If you have any issues, uh, she can always help out as well. But this prequal is, you know, pretty straightforward. We ask for um, certain insurance information. We ask for uh, past project type information. Um, we also ask about some financial information. It's just kind of a way for us to to get to know your firm a little bit. You know, what your capabilities are, what your kind of right size project is. Um, and it kind of gets you registered in our system. Um, it is an annual deal. So if you have already gotten pre qualified with us, um, it runs out every year. So um, just check that out. And if you need to renew, um, go ahead and work on that as well. Next slide. Uh, so one way that uh, we in commercial uh, issue out um, invitations uh, to bid is Building Connected. So if you don't have Building Connected and aren't familiar with it, it is free for subcontractors for the, the basic version. You can upgrade to um, a paid version if you would like, but um, it's definitely um, everything you need is in the free version. But um, if you've never used it before, it's pretty um, simple uh, web uh, program. Um, I would encourage you to, to get in there, um, create your company in there and get kind of familiar with it. But all of our invites do come out through Building Connected. Um, it will have trade specific invites, um, you know, depending on what kind of work category that you're interested in. We do use this for communication during the bid period. Um, so in this, we'll issue documents, we'll issue addendums, RFIs, 
Um, and you can also use this as a platform to submit your actual bid proposal. So definitely try to get in there, get, get comfortable with it. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to myself or Keisha and we kind of help you through there. Next slide. And then there's uh, Keisha has his contact information. Um, I guess there's anything you want to talk about there on, on Ceros, Keisha? Uh, no, that's a web. So that is a website that we created that just is more specific on some other type of work that the heavy civil marine and industrial group does. Uh, and, and the contact information, as you can see, is right there. If, if any questions that you have, uh, as Andrew mentioned on building uh, connected or on our pre qualification process, just email me and uh, I, uh, we've got a a document that that Kim Williams has created and sent it to me, which was awesome. It it does a step by step process on the pre qualification, and I can all I can email it to 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 you all so that you can you can do the pre qual process uh, as Andrew suggested. I highly recommend getting the pre qual done. It makes it much easier for once we get to the stage where uh, we are we're all trying to work together. Next slide. That concludes. So yes, that concludes our presentation that we have. We will now open it up for, or if there anything in the chat for any Q and A, if anyone has questions, I don't see anything, but we may now have thought of some or uh, want to have this opportunity to ask questions. We can do that now. There is a question from Donna Chatel. Okay. Yes, it's a, it's asking Marine Fender subcontract. We are small business and supply Marine Fenders. Um, we have the capability to do or buy American made in US fenders and steel panels. Well, definitely reach out to me. That uh, applies to a lot of the projects that we do in the Marine uh, world. And uh, like I said, the Port of Houston project uh, does have a heavy fender and uh, bollard requirement. Uh, if you please reach out to me with your contact information. And I'll make sure that you're invited to the building connected uh, bid package. Once we put that out, we plan to put the bidding out for the Port of Houston Wharf 7 project in the by next week. And, and just to piggyback on that, Keisha, um, when it comes to the suppliers that you um, are in need of, that would be one of them, I'm assuming. And did you indicate? For those that are on this call that you indicate indicate concrete rebar and whether any other okay uh yeah the major scopes uh as far as supplies are concerned yeah concrete uh ready mixed concrete rebar aggregates uh is another big one uh, uh cement lime uh, we have uh precast uh utility boxes that are needed on that project, geotextile, fenders, bollards. Wow, that's a long list. It, it, uh, it is. Uh, it is a pretty large project with a wide uh, uh, work scope. And on the subcontract side, our, it'll be for re, uh, re, rebar installation, electrical and telecom. Uh, trucking is a pretty big scope on the job. We have to haul uh, dredge material to the uh, to, to the dredge material placement area, and and then if there's anybody that is isn't asphalt uh, prime asphalt priming sub would be another big scope of work. Striping and signage is a big scope as well. And if if you reach out to me, and I can definitely see if there is any scope any other scopes. That, that we can use on that and forward the building connected and wide accordingly. Thank you very much for that. Here are a couple of questions that are coming in now. Um, they're asking any warehouse partners needed for equipment or product storage? On, on our current project as of now, uh, no, but I wouldn't say never. There are some of the projects, they may have a long lead item that we may bring in early. And in which case we may require, uh, we may require storage. So reach out to me and I'll, uh, 
I'll see if that is something that we may use in a future estimate. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say too, Keshev, on the on the commercial side, we've seen that as well. You know, with just today's market and long lead on items, we're trying to get stuff released and ordered early, and then you know, if it gets here, that's great. Um, find a place to store it. So on the commercial side as well, there could be some some opportunities. Oh, fantastic, Deidre! If you can see some of these questions, can you please chime in um, and ask some as well? Any upcoming environmental testing laboratory work? I'll answer real quick for the uh, on the marine civil. So a lot of the Port of Houston projects, the Port of Houston, a lot of the port, uh, the the public clients, they tend to do their testing on by themselves. The Port Arthur project we are bidding, that one, the testing is on us, on McCarthy. So uh, reach out reach out to me and I can forward your information to the other estimator that's responsible on that bid. But what? Port of Houston is, is usually handled by the port itself. Right, okay. Um, one of the participants have already completed your pre-qual for a subcontractor and was wondering um, what's the process for the supplier because his company is a cement hauler and supplier. I can answer that. Um, so when you set up or start a pre-qualification, you're asked to indicate if you're a subcontractor or a vendor. And depending on which one you select, it's a specific application force that we ask subs to fill out, and then there's a different one for a supplier slash vendor. So I would say if you've already done um, the subcontractor version, um, I would say you would want to start a new pre-qualification um, under supplier. Now, if you do both sub and supplier, the, the biggest thing is that it's it's tied to your company's tax ID number. So let's say your your other company that's already in the system has a tax ID number, and then you're trying to set up a new application with that same tax ID number as a vendor. It's the system's not going to let you do that. So um, I would say only create a new one if your other company has a different tax ID number. So you can add supplier to the the one. Well, you it's an either or situation. It's either you fill out the subcontractor application or you fill out the supplier. So my thing is, if your company is already in the system as a sub, mm -hmm. typically that'll pre-qualify you. For being a vendor as well. Okay. So, but okay. but if he wants to separate the two entities because they have two different tax ID numbers, and and so then you would want to set up a separate mm -hmm. application under that uh, vendor, create a new one as a vendor, and enter the new the separate tax ID number. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you have opportunities for architects? So I'll, I'll take that 1 from the commercial side. So, typically, um, everything that we do is, um, the architects kind of already on board. Um, with the, the client and the jobs that we do, um, but there are some instances where. Uh, we ask for like a peer review, um, that's more on things such as, um, enclosure. Um, or there's some things that maybe um, it's a design build where we might need some assistance. Um, but I would say most of the time architect is, is already through the client unless it's a design build type situation. Okay. Uh, there was one question under questions that wanted to know who is the contact for security, physical security, camera systems, access controls in the Houston area? So I'd say from, from our group um, in commercial, Jason Fee um, is our pre-con director that focuses on MEP as well as uh, division 27, 28 um, type scopes. So, um, he would be kind of our, our person, our expert, um, kind of in that realm. Um, and we can get 
his contact information out as well. Yeah, we on the heavy civil, I mean, on the Marine side, we normally don't see it as a separate bid package. It normally security gets rolled into our, uh, the electrical telecom. Uh, subcontract bid package because it, it all ties in together. So, not it and it would be uh, for the wharf 7 bid, it'll be me. But it won't, it will not be a separate bid package on the security side. Yeah. And Andrew and, and Keshev, when he says, when the person says physical security, do we, do we actually ever hire like a physical security person to be on site on our projects? Normally, no. Uh, usually ours is uh, a lot of the times with, with the public port jobs, it is within an enclosure, within their enclosure. So security is normally covered by the port or in, in the case of the Corps of Engineers job, it's and we normally have a security enclosure, but we normally don't carry security per se. And I, I would say on the commercial side, we do um, since we got yeah, like Keisha was saying, we're not behind typically, you know, an already secured location. So on most of our projects, we do have physical security. Now, I think in the past, you know, five to 10 years, that's kind of changed into the, you know, the, the automatic security cameras and, and monitoring, if you will, not necessarily like physical security officers walking around site, but we've had, we have had to have um, those folks as well in, in situations where um, if we've seen heightened, um, you know, theft or vandalism, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, typically on most of our commercial projects, um, we do need some sort of, of security on site. Okay, that turned out to be a really interesting question. Yeah. Um, this one here is, do you purchase critical infrastructure equipment such as uninterruptible power supplies directly or through the subs? So I can, I can answer from the commercial side. So um, in the past, we've typically purchased, um, you know, equipment and, and such through the electrical package or okay. uh, mechanical package. But here recently, just with what we've seen with lead times on projects, um, where maybe we're not ready to hire um, those subs yet, but we do need to get the equipment on order and um, basically the, the time clock moving um, on um, getting it to, to the job site. We have started to do a little bit of direct buy on some equipment, like I said, the, the long lead type stuff. So I would say it's it's definitely starting to change, but just with where the market is. So um, we have started to do a little bit of that. Okay. Yes, and, and if they were on your pre-qual program, they would understand better because of the way it comes out on your portal, right? The, the things you want in your MEP package. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, that building connected is definitely how we communicate um, mm -hmm. what each of our bid packages um, look like and, and what type of scope we're asking folks to pick up within that. I mean, on the commercial side, we, we do scope sheets, which is, you know, work package specific, and it's basically an Excel sheet with a bunch of lines in it. And it's kind mm -hmm. of the specific things that um, we're asking people to pick up. So we try to be pretty detailed on, you know, what's within each of the, the packages that we have out for, for bid and award. Okay. Yeah. Ours, ours is something very similar. We, we use building connected as well, and there'll be a scope sheet that'll normally get attached. You know, as, as the project progresses, listing some of the items that we are looking for and the pricing that we're looking for. Okay, uh, this seems like the last question, at least it's the last one I see on my screen. Um, the gentleman is with a business flooring business, and he says that he um, is participating in the upcoming West Belford Park and Ride project, and he's looking forward to sending you guys a proposal. However, he wants you to add his email to your bidding list. 
So I'm yeah. assuming it's more than just a, adding an email, right? Yeah, so what we do is, um, and that's a, a good point, we keep up with kind of a master list um, within Building Connected of what trades like to do what types of scopes. And so it's kind of like our, our database, if you will. Um, so definitely, um, we can make sure that the, the contact information we have um, for this particular firm is updated, um, basically kind of in our, our template um, sub listing, if you will. Okay. Well, I don't see anything else. Okay. All right. So that's, that's it. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, for asking the questions of McCarthy that you uh, wanted answers to. McCarthy, you all always do a phenomenal job when you present uh, during our subs and sandwiches. And so, of course, we always have a lot of questions and I'm sure we'll get some questions once we log off of here. But again, we will certainly forward those to you in the event that does happen. Thank you all so much. We do appreciate your time. We appreciate the corporate partnership. And we're looking forward to our continued work together.